I like the economy. I think, um, you know, everybody talks about this late cycle, but they don't remember that this is the easiest monetary policy in the history of modern finance. I mean, even getting after harder, quantitative easing, sure, getting a little bit harder, but it's still easy monetary policy. So I think our economy's got a couple of years to run. I just don't see it coming to an end at the end of 19. I think that's way too pessimistic. You know, we just got Citigroup's earnings this morning. We're going to be getting the rest of the financials this week. You like the banks? I mean, they've been battered. They've been damaged. So, look, the bond markets were really difficult in the fourth quarter. I mean, spreads widened. When spreads widen, it's good for banks tomorrow, bad for banks today, right? You own a lot of stuff, it goes down today, bad for today. So bad fourth quarter marks, right? Tough first couple of weeks of January, but then the world of bigger spreads are better for banks. So that helps them in the fourth quarter this year. So. I like it. Right. I think they're going to do. <clears throat> I think they're going to do much, much better. Volatility is the friend or enemy of, of your business and of these guys. So uh, BGC Partners, my public company, loves volatility. We yes. love volatility. You know, quantitative easing, which was like a bomb blanket on volatility, right? It just quieted it all down. You know, taking that bomb blanket off. Volatility coming back, uh, revenues were up like 17% last year. I mean, things feel really good for right. the public company, BGC Partners. Uh, talking about your company, speak to this. Uh, you're now working with uh, Andrew Jane, who ran uh, Deutsche Bank. Yeah, Anshu is just a great guy, really fantastic And partner. what are you trying to do with him? Well, you know, Cantor Fitzgerald uh, is a great middle market investment bank, right? So we're, we try to live right below where the big banks go. Think of it this way. We have $3 billion in capital, and Morgan Stanley's got $80 billion. Right. We're, not, we're not sort of mano a mano with them, but we can be high touch, high service, really care about, say, hedge funds in the 500 to $2 billion range. Uh, healthcare, we have a spectacular healthcare practice where we focus on raising $150, $200 million right. for healthcare companies. And uh, so that's it, focused on our emerging So that's the kind of business. work he's doing. He's not, he's not getting into the trading business with you. No, no, we are, we are focused on taking care of our clients. We're a distribution business. And, uh, and I think we've got big plans for this year, so feeling really good about it. The re no, the reason I ask is obviously Deutsche Bank has struggled. And, and, and whether and he sometimes gets some of that blame. Well, I love that. I mean, the guy left in 2015. You know, it's 2018, and they're still blaming the guy. 2019. You know, oh, true. 2019. You know, they're still blaming the guy. I mean, it's nice to blame the past, but uh, you know, Andre Jane built that business. He's a spectacular executive, uh, one of the great financial service executives of the world, and uh, to have him as my partner is uh, one of the great pleasures I've had for the last two years. Okay, tell us about Puerto Rico because you just you just got back. What were you doing down there? So you guys know we have our charity day. Right. right, and all our employees waive their day's pay, and, and our clients do tons of business. So we give about 150 different charities money, but we try to set aside one big chunk to do something important in the world. And, uh, and so this, this year, we just came back. I came back last night late. I went down to San Juan, Puerto Rico. Um, my wife flies down and uh, meets the mayor, and, uh, and we sort out everything. We picked Head Start programs. That means kids are getting lunch paid for at school. In elementary school, we give them, we pick their families, 4,000 families. We told them on Thursday, come to the convention center. We have 200 volunteers flown down, and we give them each $1,000. Took care of all 4,000 families in two and a half hours. Give it with respect, give it with kindness, and expect nothing in return. What's they didn't apply, they didn't ask. Just gave them a card, a Payoneer credit card with $1,000 on it, and said, moms, go use this to take care of your, uh, What's your families. What's the reaction you got? It's, you get so much love. Like, I don't know who gets more, them or us, because it just fills your heart with love. I mean, this woman comes up to me, she hugs me, and she goes, I'm going to buy mattresses for my family. We haven't had mattresses since Hurricane Maria, and now I'm going to go buy mattresses. And, and you just, like, like wow. And, and then she skips out. You know, and they all bring their kids and their families. It is the most beautiful thing because we seek nothing. Right? We, we went, we took care of these families, and we left. You took your volunteer team to see Hamilton. I did. So we, uh, you know, uh, Lynn manuel is down there, and, uh, and he's a friend of mine, so uh, I made a big donation to him. And, uh, and to say thank you to all my volunteers who go for two days and just work their tails what? off, I took them all to Hamilton, and, uh, and it, was, uh, it was beautiful. What, what's your sense just of the economy down there? I know there were a lot of bondholders, obviously, who, who got killed, some who... You, I, I know you don't own the bonds, but you traded the bonds sure. probably on behalf of clients. I think the tourism business is coming back hard. You know, I took a tour around and, and saw all the hotels, and the hotels feel good. 
uh, occupancy up. I, you know, I asked all those kind of questions right. that you would ask. You know, how's occupancy doing? How's the travel doing? So tourism coming back hard because, let's face it, I was there yesterday. It was 82 and sunny. I mean, you know, here it's 25 and there it's 82 and sunny. But, you know, I think the commercial side of the island, it's, it's now back to being an island. And you can't fix it with manufacturing. You can't fix it. You know, yeah, you have to fix it with intellectual property or classic commodities. And we know commodities are having a hard time. So I, I think it's going to struggle. I think fundamentally the economy is going to struggle. Tourism, good. The rest of the island, I, th I think it's a big challenge. Right. Big um, challenge. We started this conversation talking about interest rates. We'll talk, end it. Uh, what do you think Jerome Powell is ultimately going to do this, uh, this year? I think he's got one in him. I think they, they continuously want to move away from zero because, let's face it, if, they don't, if you don't get interest rates back in the Fed's hands, what's he got, right? At a quarter percent, you're the head of the Fed. What can you do? Like, you're like, well, thanks for the job. I've you got no move. You think that's later? You think that happens in March or later in the year? I think he wants to push it. I think he's got one in him, but he wants, he'll wait a little bit longer because the economy's a little bumpy now. But I think he puts one in him. And, uh, and I think the, the market kind of likes it. They'll, they'll be soft on it first, but afterward they'll appreciate it. That assumes that the economy gets through kind of these, this, this turbulent period that it's going through I, right I, now. Look, I think it's just going to be a little bumpy, but the fact is our economy feels good from my is perspective. Is tax reform still a positive in 2019, or are all the benefits rolling off so that the comps are going to be bad? That we've how had that question be? asked like six times. How, today. how can you have like trillions of dollars in Europe? Forced to, to be in Europe, right? We all had to keep our money where we made money, right? I had, had a big gain. We had $400 million. I couldn't bring it back to America. Now you change the rules. I can bring it back to America whenever I want. You think it's all back? There's no chance it's all back. I think there are fundamentals still out there that you lower everyone's tax rate from 35 to 21. They, but it's the, going to be good for our economy. But the question is, are they bringing it back? Period. But, no, but the question is, are they bringing it back and pursuing buybacks, which might be Prop, propping up the market, which I'm not, I'm not saying is a bad thing, but the question is that relative to actually capital capital uh, expenditures hasn't happened I yet. Know. I think they're going to build cars in America. You know, are you, are you discounting factories and manufacturing? I, I do think, I think from my perspective that the economy, people think the late stage part of the economy stuff is just overdone. This is just not your grandmother's economy. You know, it's different now, and I think it's what just kind of going growth, to last What kind of growth longer. rate do you think we can have? I think, I think mid, mid twos. Mid twos? You're not getting, but you're so not mid, getting but this mid twos does, stuff. But mid twos doesn't really pay for itself, right? I mean, let's, let's, let's be fair. Let's call a spade. I'm not, I'm not trying right. to say it pays for Did I right. say no. that we paid for ourselves? <laughs> I mean, by the way, I'm in, I'm in the bond business. I love these deficits. You know I love these deficits. You know, somebody's right. happy when we're running these deficits, and we trade this did stuff you, all day long. Did you use that litmus test for eight years? Did it pay for itself? <laughs> Never. Uh, well, anyway, it thank you. It's a completely different okay. environment. Then. Oh, I uh, forgot. It lasted for all eight years, the, the financial crisis. The greatest financial crisis since 1929. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. You weren't live in 87. It's you don't remember 19% uh, <laughs> interest rates. 19% in interest rates. <laughs> okay.